Hello YouTubers. I don't know how you look at it, but I think we're living in very exciting times. I really love Microsoft Cloud and the ecosystem with Microsoft is building there. Especially because for me it makes it possible to really transform my IDs to simple to use applications. You know, I'm a wizard with Excel and I know some C Sharp, but with Power Apps, Flow and Power BI, I am able to create a lot faster and deliver my customers with the tool they need. The best part of it is that it's included in most Office 365 subscriptions, what basically means where I come from, all my customers have access to these great tools. What I notice is that learning Power Apps at start is sometimes hard, basically because there is not a lot of resources to find smart building solutions. For me, that's the main reason to start this YouTube channel and to share the things I learn when building Power Apps with others. If you like and learn from my videos, then please hit the bell and subscribe to my channel. And of course, like the video so other people who want to learn Power Apps are able to find them. In case you don't know me, my name is Paul Kroon and I gonna be your host in this blog videos on learning Power Apps. In this video, I want to talk to you about enhanced grouping, a feature just came up in Power Apps. And I want to handle this subject because in later videos, I'm gonna use this grouping to do all kinds of neat tricks with user forms and with uh, load uh, icons. So it's good to know how this works because there are a few flaws and there are a few things that doesn't work properly like it's supposed to be with grouping, but it's an experimental feature. So they kind of fix that probably if we uh, all uh, answer question on how to fix some major or small issues. So let's go to Power Apps and look at grouping. Uh, the enhanced grouping, before I start, you have to go to App Settings to and the Advanced function to activate them. And you have to have two things activated, the improved app rendering, uh, final validation. Uh, in new apps, this will be enabled, but I have some old apps and when the feature came on, I disable the improved app rendering because at that time there was a problem with uh, uh, triggering some events on toggle controls uh, with global variables so i then put it off and now i had to put it on and i was bugging uh, why the enhanced grouping didn't work at those app where i uh, turned it off a few months ago and the second thing you have to turn on is to try the enhanced group and you see it's on the experimental features. So, uh, okay, you have to put it on to use the enhanced grouping and then you can two things. You can do an insert from a control and there is a group with experimental behind it and then you get a group and in the new app, in new apps, you can uh, uh, size this, but in all old apps, I uh, notice that you can size it by uh, um, doing it on the corner. You really have to size it uh, in the numbers. But when you know that, that's fine. It's not a big problem, but it was something I uh, noticed in old apps. So then you have you can have a group, and then you can put in a button and labels and all the kind of things. Uh, you want to have and where is our group you see i had a header group for all my headers and uh, uh, footers and uh, my basically my layout uh, from behind and you see because this was uh, selected the group is uh, put in the group so you can nest groups, you can have a top group and then uh, a bottom group. So you also can say there is no uh, cut here, but when you do control X, you can uh, cut the uh, group and then you can select the screen and paste it. And then your group is on the screen. So you can take a group, cut it and put it in uh, the screen or in another group. So you can move it around by uh, cutting and pasting it. So then you have a group with labels in it. And what's different than the 
first grouping is that when we, for example, say we want to have a visibility and we want to have this um, based on a condition. So let's first make a condition, update context condition is false or let's say condition is okay it's false and we push the button with holding the alt then the condition is going to be false and if we say the visibility has to be set to the condition then our group will be enabled let's put here a uh, condition to true put alt and enter and then we see our group appearing again but what's different is when i have a condition here so i set some uh, formula on the visible statement it's not set on the visible statement of the controls beneath and earlier it uh, was so when you selected the group and you put in a formula then all the members of the group get the same formula so this is not the case with a new grouping and i think this is better because then you say uh, the grouping is true and uh, um, put a um, variable on that and condition on that to say is it visible or not and you don't have to uh, set any condition on the controls to let them show if you your condition is met true so i think that is very nice uh, that they make it this way there is a flaw uh, when we uh, try to put this button we see we can control this button and if we set this to false we can control the button so what we see is that when we have grouping uh, the grouping behaves like uh, for example a label so it has a solid background and we uh, when we make a group true then uh, the group will make the controls behind them not to be able to select so you can imagine that when we uh, would select these three icons and the button icons and we say this is our triggering um, uh, for a menu for example and we want to group them uh, you kind of block all the um, the controls behind it and normally when you group it's just a group uh, to to say these controls come to each other they are meant to be with each other and not to say uh, uh, we want them to have like a, a solid background so we can put an on select on it and when you look at it at the group there is no on select statement so it has no uh, use to say okay it's a solid background and uh, it's gonna block everything so in the description i have a link to a uh, id i post it on the board with power apps so maybe if you like so um, you can go to the link and give kudos to the id to say a grouping uh, should be visible but uh, shouldn't block anything so it should be a uh, not solid background but how do you say that a background which just do the grouping and nothing else <coughs> also with a grouping now um, you can give it a color I think that's also a nice uh, option because when you give it a color and you say I want to have 0 0.9 uh, you can make uh, like a transparent backend like for a user form so but I wouldn't use it I would have a label in my group uh, to do that kind of thing uh, because let's say I don't want them uh, to block my controls behind it if I don't want them to so I understand the thinking about it that you can say okay I turn on a group and then the the group has a user form and uh, it's gonna block everything else and you only can work in the user form but I think it's a wrong idea so 
please go to the link and give it kudos and uh, uh, let them change this behavior so we can uh, choose ourselves to add a label or a transparent label to do the blocking. Okay, there are, uh, let's put this to a transparent. So we have a group. What you can do with groups is uh, what I said, insert it. You can also select some items and say, I want to group them. And it's gonna do basically the same. But what you see is that uh, the layout of my items has changed. So that's a little bit strange. It shouldn't be like that. It should be that the items stay on the same page and not uh, changing my, my layout. What you can do to overcome this is to say I want to have a group. I want to make it a little bit, oh, where's my group? I have a group in a group. I don't mean to do that. So you see um, your group is fastly on a wrong space. So you have to be very careful uh, when using this and really select where you want to add your uh, controls. So let's select these controls and say, I want to copy them, go to the group and paste them. So then you see the group is totally surrounding and my layout is contained. So this is maybe even a better way uh, to do so. You also can say, I want to uh, the same for this, when you select a group and another group and another group and you say, okay, I want to group these groups. Probably all your layout is going to change. Now in this case, it doesn't, but normally I see my layout changing all the way and <laughs> get really frustrating about it. So you can add a group. And basically when you have this, then it's bugging me the most that the back end isn't transparent. And you will see why in the next video when I'm going to talk about user forms. So uh, see that video. So, but for the rest, uh, a very nice feature with some uh, minor flows. They have to uh, uh, be able to fix. And the biggest flow is that the grouping doesn't uh, work like grouping in general and all kinds of application but it's more uh, working like a label uh, and blocking my controls that's the main issue so or they should take that totally out or they should add a, uh, a parameter where i can set i want to group to be solid or i want to group to be transparent so i can control my controls behind it if I want. So uh, this is long enough <laughs> for the grouping I think. So I hope to see you in the next video where I'm gonna use it enhanced grouping to make really really nice user forms and a really nice setup to use different user forms based on uh, a simple logic I thought of during my holiday. So I hope to see you in the next video and uh, thanks for watching. So, we are at the end of this video. Again, if you like and learn from my videos, then please hit the bell and subscribe to my channel. And of course, like the video, so other people who want to learn Power Apps will be able to find this video too. My name is Paul Kroon, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, and let's carry on to power up with Power Apps.